I'm not sure whether you have watched any video about my two-step funnel framework, but I want to introduce to you again, what is the two-step funnel framework? Now, two-step funnel framework is really a framework that I've been using since 2016. You know, for the past many years, since I started advertising for brands since 2010, uh, many years we always have this struggle. Sometimes the ad work, but after a while it stopped working. And then a lot of times we have a lot of struggles such as, how do we actually make sure that our advertisement is only reaching fresh audiences? That's the first question that we ask. How do we make sure that people who have taken action don't see our ad again? That's the next thing. How do we actually make more money with the same amount that we are spending? So these are all the questions that came to us when we are managing clients' campaigns. And then um, I started developing this model in late 2015. And until 2016, I started implementing this on my clients' cases. And um, it was kind of shaky because it was really new at that point And I was fine tuning until 2018. Until 2018, that year itself, the, the framework has guided over 5 million ringgit in that spend that particular year itself. So with that, all these massive exercises and, you know, and, and implementations going into the, 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 the so-called equation, I was able to really perfect the whole model. And yeah, that's when we really realized that, look, the two-step funnel framework really worked. So throughout the years, the two-step funnel framework was implemented in more than 20 over industries. So if you are B2B, it works. Real estate, it works. E-commerce, it works. Even if you're selling on e-commerce marketplace like Shopee Lazada, it works. For those who don't know, I have a course that tells you how to build a very comprehensive campaign for Shopee or Lazada store using this two-step funnel framework. It's powerful. It just works, okay? Because I have been implementing this for, you know, I've guided tens of millions in Facebook ad spend using this framework. So we know how it works. So that's the reason why we started teaching this in 2019. So in the past two years, we have trained, you know, close to a few thousand people about this two-step funnel framework. But I want to share with you what is this two-step funnel framework fundamentally. So the whole idea here is two-step funnel framework is the framework that we will run two campaigns simultaneously. I mean, two ads in one campaign. So there will be, there will be a different way. So basically, we have a tier one campaign and a tier two campaign. Okay. Now, this is the first, if this is the first time you see it, just bear with me. Uh, if you need to watch this again, you do it later on. The idea here is I want to help you understand what is the two-step funnel framework and why are we using certain types of uh, so-called creative selection to build the two-step funnel framework. Now, when it comes to tier one campaign, I want to highlight over here. When it comes to tier one campaign, okay, most important thing about tier one is we want to use video view. So if you don't have a video, you can actually do slideshow like this and you're combining six images to create you know, an interchanging slideshow. Now, the reason why we want to use a video or slideshow, which is the same anyway, is because this is the easiest way for us to qualify an audience intent. Now, what does it mean? Like, for example, if you watch this, this is a 12 seconds video, 12 seconds slideshow. Now, if you watch this video up to 50%, which, which means you spend six seconds on this advertisement, what does it mean? If you are not interested, if you are not intended, you won't pay six seconds of your life. You won't spend six seconds on your life on a specific advertisement. Now, if you do, I will qualify that as an intent. So once I qualify you, I, I'm using two qualifier over here. There's one thing that you need to understand, which is what we call the audience qualifier. I'm using different mechanism to qualify the audience intent. So the first qualifier is, I want to capture those people who watch the v slideshow up to 50%. Okay, and then second one is I want to capture those people who open the lead form. So the third one is, of course, people who submitted the lead form. So either one of these three actions that you do, first thing that I'll make sure here is I make sure you don't see the first ad anymore, which I will use this all these three audience qualifier to exclude you from seeing the tier one ad again. You see, put it this way. This is totally arguable. You can argue with me whether you agree or disagree, but put it this way. If you have seen an ad, okay, you have clicked on an ad or you have watched the video and then in a way you have already indicated intent or you have done certain action on this advertisement. If this advertisement keeps coming back to you, do you think you are likely to watch this video again? Or do you think you are likely to click on this advertisement again, to open a lead form again? It's very unlikely because although our mind is in a way locked in a way where we don't actually, we don't remember much things when it comes to social media, but in a way, we still remember the, the, the piece of content that we have interacted with. And it's very unlikely for us to take action on the same piece of content twice. 
if you agree with me, all right? So, so that would actually, by doing exclusion, this is really something that a lot of people don't know how to do and forgotten how to do maybe. Now, when you're able to do exclusion, the first objective that we will achieve here is what? We are making sure that you're not wasting money on to display your advertisement on the people who have taken action. Because you have seen the ad, you, you have seen this ad, you, you will not interact with this ad anymore. So what I do when I qualify you on by watching video up to 50% and open form, I will start showing you the next advertisement. Now, when I show you the next advertisement, I will actually give you more information. I would actually stay for a little, a little while longer just to make sure that I express and I actually kind of deliver the message that I want to deliver to you. So as you can see here, over this one, I'm using a carousel. Uh, I think you notice as well, I'm using the same images, but that one was a, was a slideshow and this one I turned it into carousel because I know you have spent 10 seconds on this. I mean, uh, for six seconds on this. I think you're interested and you open form. So when I reappear to you, I want to show you a different format about how it looks like. And then uh, I want you to be able to spend more time on each and every one, uh, each and every piece of the information that I want to share with you. So this is how I do. Now, the key about tier two is this. Now for tier one, we have the exclusion mechanism, but for tier two, we also have one thing that we call the optimized duration. Now, put it this way. We all know that the tier two is really the retargeting, but my argument about retargeting is a lot of people retarget for too long. Okay? A lot of people retarget for too long. What does it mean? Let's say, for example, if a person watched this video up to 50 seconds and open form, a lot of people retarget for 30 days, 60 days, because they say that, you know, the longer I put, the longer I'm able to gather these people, the bigger the audience size will become. I beg to differ. Why? Because you just have to imagine if you do 30 days, right? That means when I watch this video up to 50 seconds, for the next 30 days, I'll be seeing this app for bloody 30 days. You get what I mean? You are also creating ad fatigue. What is ad fatigue? Ad fatigue is really the scenario where a person has seen your ads way too many times. I started to hate you. Okay? Ad fatigue. Second thing is ad fatigue, ad fatigue will also equal to budget waste because they have seen it way too many times. If they want to take action, they have taken it a long time ago. If they still don't want to take action, why are you still showing them your ad for that long? So my question here is this, when you're doing your retargeting, my retargeting mecha mechanism is very simple. How long do you think your audience need to think and consider before they decide to buy from you or someone else's? So let me give you a very simple example, right? For real estate, we usually don't go for more than 14 days. Okay, and then for e-commerce, we don't go for longer than seven days because even you're selling handphone, iPhone per se and all that. You see, even handphone or smartphone, a lot of people don't know this because we work with a lot of smartphone sellers. One of my students actually, uh, they spend about 50,000 50, ringgit every month on Facebook ads itself. Can you imagine the volume that they are doing? 50,000, five zero. Okay, so what they say, it's a solid data they say that, Jason. People consider buying smartphone, the duration that they will consider is really about less than 48 hours. Less than 48 hours. Typically, I'm saying that 90 over percent people will decide within 48 hours. Why? Chances are when you're looking to buy a new phone, you're ready. You probably have the money or you probably have your phone bloody broken. You need a replacement fast enough because nowadays human cannot live without a smartphone. So the duration to think for a smartphone is really short. So that's the thing. So for e-commerce things that we are looking at and all that, you know, so it's the same thing. Uh, even people looking and selling on e-commerce marketplaces like Shopee, Lazada, those people who actually indicate the interest, you want to retarget them for the short three days to seven days. Why? Because if they don't buy now, they're probably not buying in a short while. They probably are waiting for the next big event like 12-12. So you don't want to follow them for 30 days, which it's actually kind of wasting your money because if I, let's say for example, this is what I do. When I see a product on Shopee, I like it, I will add to cart first, or I'd actually bookmark it. So I may not buy it now, but when I'm ready, when it comes to 12-12, I will revisit my cart, I will revisit my favorite list, and I will actually get it from there. But as an advertisement perspective, you want to follow them for the optimum duration. So for e-commerce, three days to seven days. For real estate, seven days to 14 days. That's about a max that we will go. So this is how we have a tier one and tier two. So tier one, 
It's really an evergreen campaign because the moment people watch video up to 50% and openly form, they will not see this anymore, whereby they will start seeing the second ad for maximum maybe like 14 days. And then after that, we will let people go. One thing that is really important when it comes to building a two-step funnel framework is you need to know when to let go. It's utmost important that you need to know when to let go. People ask me, Jason, what about those people who actually wait? Just let them go. Come on, man. They are probably just about 5% of the audiences and all that. And if you are really keen, they will come back to you. If they don't, just let them go. You don't waste your money on the people just because of this 5%, you know, uh, on, on, on the scenario that we're looking at. So you got to be really careful about this thing. Okay, so that's about that.